Prettier is a fantastic tool if you're like me and write really messy code. So what Prettier can do, it is a code auto formatter. And so if you have a gigantic mess of code like this with no spaces, uh, gigantic lines of text, and sometimes you include semicolons, sometimes you don't, what you can do with Prettier, you can just format it with Prettier and all of a sudden everything just looks much better. Everything is properly indented. All of the code styling is now consistent across the entire document. And the first time that you use Prettier, it seems almost magical. But at the same time, I have stopped using Prettier in my own projects. Because after years of using it, I still love it, but there are just too many annoyances that constantly pop up with Prettier for me to continue using it. And so in this video, I'm gonna go over why I stopped using Prettier and why you might not want to use Prettier as well. Now, don't get me wrong, I still think that Prettier is a great tool and it definitely does still have some use cases, but it might not always be the best choice for you. And I do have to give a shout out to this article as well. This is a very good article that I found when I was researching this video and he comes to a lot of the same conclusions that I do. And I copied a couple of the examples he gives in this post for my video. So I'll leave a link to this in the description. This is definitely worth a read. It is by Anthony Fu, so go check him out. And so of course you probably already know its biggest drawback is that Prettier is very opinionated. So if Prettier has a way that they want to do something, then that's basically how you're going to have to format your code. Prettier does not give you a whole lot of options. There are a few small options that you can get, like you can configure if you want semicolons or not in your JavaScript, but a lot of things are just not up to your choice. So if you think that this is more readable than the alternative, then you're kind of out of luck because Prettier wants you to format it like this and you don't get a lot of say in the matter. There are some things that are just non-negotiable. And in some ways that is a good thing. You don't have to tweak every little thing. Sometimes it's better just not to think about things and have it done automatically for you. But there are some issues in Prettier that over time just get to be a huge headache. Let me give you an example. So my biggest issue with Prettier is the line breaking system that they have. So Prettier allows you to set a print width for every line. And by default, I believe it is 80 characters. So if there is a line that is longer than 80 characters, it will automatically split it into two or more. And so I can give you an example with this. Let's say I have an array of users right here and I save this with Prettier. And you might think that this is readable or not, but here's what Prettier does. So you save this and you get kind of this weird jumble of different styles. So this one is spread over five lines. This is spread over one line. This is over five lines. This is, it's just a huge complete mess right here. And that's because some lines are longer than 80 characters and some lines are shorter. That's why you get this weird jumble. And maybe you wanna keep the original style. That is literally not possible with Prettier. So if you try to have a line that is more than 80 characters, you can't do that. And maybe you're thinking you can just increase the line width in the settings. That doesn't really fix the problem as you will still have this just with longer lines. And you probably don't want your lines to stretch onto infinity anyway. It is good to have a maximum line width, but you can somewhat get around with this by manually adding line breaks here. So if I add a line break here, then it kind of fixes the problem. And I can just do the same for these save this, and now everything is in the same format, which may be more readable to you. But when I use Prettier, I actually had to do this a lot where I would kind of have to micromanage the formatter and try to manipulate it to actually look the way I want it to. So when you're formatting the formatter, it's not really as automatic as you would expect it to be. And sometimes it doesn't even give you the option if you want to manually change the formatting. So let me give you another example. Let's take a React component with some JSX inside. This is basically HTML inside JavaScript. Maybe you think that's heresy, but whatever. Let's see what Prettier does to it. So here's how it looks normally. And some of these lines are a little bit long, but what happens when you save it is that these now spread out like it did with the previous example. But this one is even worse because maybe you think okay, I'll just put these on separate lines so it has a consistent formatting across all these different list items. Well, with this, you can't even do that because whenever I save it, it automatically reverts back to the way it was before. And so you're going to have these weird messy list items where some are indented, some aren't. 
and there is no way to make them all consistent with each other. It just ends up constantly annoying me, and it happens a lot more than you would expect. And of course, these examples, by default, I don't really think these are more readable than the way they were before. And the entire point of Prettier is just to make things more readable, and it doesn't always do the best job at that. Now, what you can do is you can add this line right here, slash prettier ignore, just put this as a comment, and then it won't touch this. And so that is a way to circumvent it, I guess. But if you're constantly putting these all over your project, then it kind of just defeats the entire purpose of prettier. Not to mention that it just adds more clutter and not less. And you might think that this is just me being nitpicky. It's basically just a style preference. And maybe I should just let prettier do its thing. But it also has other consequences. So maybe you're looking over a pull request. So this is an example pull request that somebody had. And as you can see down here, it is adding this new CSS language called SSS. And so that is pretty apparent on this line. But on this line, you're not really able to see what it's doing. And that's because Prettier formatted this into two separate lines instead of one line. And so now if you look at these two, you're not really sure at a glance what has actually changed here. Did they just add a line break? Is that it? But if you look closely, they did add the SSS here as well. But that's just not immediately obvious if you're using Prettier and it automatically formats that for you. Maybe you didn't even want it to format it like that, but you're literally not able to change it back. At least if you want to have consistent Prettier settings throughout the entire project. And that's just one more annoyance caused by Prettier. But if you don't use Prettier, then what would you use instead? So the thing is, a lot of code editors already have built in code formatting already. So let me just disable Prettier right here. And then let's go in the settings and change the formatter. And VS Code, what I'm using right here, it actually has a built-in formatter for a lot of popular languages. So I can type in JavaScript. And it has a default JavaScript formatter that we can enable right here. And we can then go back here. And if we mess up the indenting here, then we can run format document. And let's select the default TypeScript and JavaScript language features. That is what Visual Studio Code ships with. And we now get automatic formatting like you would expect with Prettier. But this built-in formatter is a lot less rigid than Prettier is. And you can even go through the settings and change things. So maybe you want to force having semicolons. You can insert semicolons automatically. You can remove them automatically. And you have a lot more options than you would with Prettier. And VS Code has built-in formatters for HTML, CSS, JSON, JavaScript, TypeScript, and all the other derivatives like SAS and React. It will format all of those just fine. And you don't really need to bring in Prettier for that. And with this, we can now format this however we would like and it's not going to get automatically reverted. So maybe you end up doing a little bit more work manually formatting some parts of your code. Because if you have a really long line here, then it's not automatically going to split it for you unless you specify it to. But for me, it's worth it not having to deal with the prettier annoyances. And this is just one example using VS Code, but the functionality is there in other editors as well. So this is NeoVim. And if you install a language server, NeoVim has built in LSP support. So if you install a server, then it's automatically going to come with formatting for you, at least for a lot of popular languages. So I've already set a key binding to format the document. And so when I run that, everything is formatted. That looks great. But upon hearing this, a lot of people might be thinking about, okay, but what if you're on a team? So this is fine if maybe you're a solo developer or working on a very small project. But if you're working in a huge team, that's basically why Prettier was invented. Because maybe you're working with two people and one person swears by putting semicolons in JavaScript and one person doesn't. Well, instead of having an argument and wasting hours of time debating which code style is the best, all of the pros and cons, well, what you can do instead is you can just install Prettier, go with the defaults there and say, this is now how we do things. Everybody run your code through Prettier and we now have a consistent code base. Because if you have a code base with a whole bunch of different code styles, it's going to be very messy. Nobody's really going to enjoy that. And that's another reason why Prettier is so opinionated, just so you don't have these small little debates basically just wasting time about these small, insignificant code styles. Prettier just says, this is the way you do it, now get to work. And I think in some cases, Prettier is useful for that, but there are other tools as well. 
For example, ESLint. Okay, so let me just open up a new project here where I've already installed ESLint. But if you're using a project that already has ESLint in order to link your JavaScript, ESLint can also take care of your code formatting and it can even automatically fix it like Prettier can. And you do need to change a few settings in your editor. At least in VS Code, you need to go into the settings and go to ESLint. And I believe you have to check this where it says enable ESLint as a formatter and then disable your default formatter. So this is none. And then when we save this, there we go. All of the problems have been fixed. And so I have an ESLint file where it says that you must use single quotes and you must have one empty line after the require statement. Just some code style rules like that. So we can save that and those have taken effect. And of course, ESLint is much more customizable than Prettier. So you can really tweak it to your desires. But like I said, sometimes you don't want to constantly be tweaking your ESLint. And so what you can do in that case is you can download a popular ESLint config file that's already available. I know the one from Airbnb is very popular. That's what I'm using for this example. And so if you don't want to have to think about how should I style my app, should I use single quotes or double quotes, then you can just install something like that. Maybe make a few very basic changes to the configuration. But after that, you really don't have to touch it ever again. So that's another way to do it. If you have a big project going on, you have a big team of people, just have them all use ESLint and you can fix your problems like that. Not to mention that if you're already using ESLint, you can integrate it with Prettier, but at least in my experience, it's always been a big headache trying to set that up and get it working correctly. It always just seems like more trouble than it's actually worth. And so finally, when should you use Prettier? Because I don't think that Prettier is the devil and if you use Prettier, you're a bad person. I do think it has its use cases. Maybe you don't want to spend time configuring ESLint and you like the way that Prettier handles everything. You can keep using Prettier and Prettier is also faster than ESLint. So this is a pretty small file, but if you're working with some really big files and you're constantly saving all the time and ESLint is constantly fixing these files, it can be noticeably slower than Prettier. On some big files, it might even take uh, a few seconds, especially if you're on an older machine. But especially for my personal projects, I do a lot of work just completely solo. And recently, I just haven't been using Prettier at all. And so you might take some time and evaluate if you need to keep using Prettier as well, especially if you have some of the same complaints that I do. So hopefully this video was useful and you can now go out and make Prettier code with and without Prettier.